Hello, investors. It's Don Vandenborg, Chief Investment Officer with Revere Asset Management. Today is Monday, October 21st, 5.17 p.m. Eastern Time, coming to you from St. Augustine Beach, Florida, with tonight's Revere Roundup Daily Market Insight video. Market state, we're in an uptrend. See the coveted four green arrows in the upper right here on the trend gauge. We break the market down. Uh, looking at the major indexes across three time frames, the short-term 21-day moving average, medium-term 50-day moving average, long-term 200-day moving average. All the major indexes trending above those levels. So we've got three arrows there, plus market leaders uh, really have been acting well during this phase of the uptrend. There are times when the, when the indexes trend uh, higher and leaders are so-so, but there are times when leaders outperform the indexes and uh, we've been seeing a lot of that lately with some sectors really coming uh, into favor, while some other sectors that had been leading uh, drop out of the way a bit. There's always rotation going on in the market. It's our job in these videos to point out to you where the money's flowing, what's healthy, and uh, what's not. So what happened today? Uh, something to potentially be concerned about. Long-term yields continue to spike. Uh, this has been the case since, and I'm talking five-year, 10-year, uh, up to 30-year, and this has been the case since the FOMC cut short-term rates. Uh, they uh, spiked for a while, uh, pulled back last week, but uh, gapped this morning to a higher high, basically a breakout of a of a cup and handle uh, pattern. Rate-sensitive um, sectors did not like that. Uh, we'll get into that when we hit the tail of the tape, but nice close out of the NASDAQ 100, the S&P 500 and leaders held up, uh, well, I really didn't see any significant red flags on leading stocks that, uh, we monitor. And that's really the key, uh, for outperformance. You identify the trend and then you focus on the best stocks in the leading sectors. So here are the final numbers of 21 over 21. Uh, despite the red in the index is up an average of uh, 0.69%, 15 up, only one down or one neutral, five down. We'll take a look at the 21 over 21 for this week. Only one new name in, well, two dropped out, two new names and uh, two dropped out. Uh, we'll go through those after the tail of the tape. The big eight, this is really what uh, masked the weakness, I guess you could say. Uh, under the surface as breath was terrible today. But the big eight up about seven tenths of a percent, led by NVIDIA, going to all-time highs up 4.1%. Glad to see that as our largest position that helped with uh, outperformance today. The RG8, our eight growth ETF composite, something to keep an eye on. Uh, this, The whole reason for creating this was a period of growth stocks getting absolutely smacked back in February, starting in February of 2021. And that coincided with a breakout in the 10-year. We had a breakout in the 10-year today, not quite the same setup, uh, but it just reinforces the fact that uh, growth names and small cap names, anything with debt does not like higher interest rates. Uh, note the solid balance sheets of the big eight. That's where money will flow to uh, if we continue to see rates rise. So, um Nothing. It just means we won't be in underperforming stocks and we will focus on what is working just like we do uh, every market day. So the S&P 500 opened down 0.15%, had an early, very small spike, then a harsh sell-off in the morning as uh, the 10-year spiked. A uh, decent comeback toward the end of the day ended up down 0.18%, bounced at the eight-day exponential moving average. Here's where the breadth problem comes in, equal weight down 0.85%. NASDAQ 100, the leader, up two-tenths of a percent, equal weight down 0.27. Dow got hit hard, down eight-tenths of a percent. Mid-caps down 1.2. Russell 2000, small caps down 1.6. Global Diversified 6040, down a half of a percent. Our flagship Grotection portfolio is in growth mode. It was up 0.10%. And if uh, again, led by NVIDIA, but um, we'll go through the charts and you'll see uh, leaders pretty much acting well and most of them closing positive that we own on the day. So let's get into the charts and we will start here with the S&P 500. New, new range we're focusing on. So 
Uh, here was the uh, breakout. Uh, and the pullback here, here, really, the breakout was down here. Uh, the breakout has been testing on its pullbacks. Uh, we've been holding this 5,800 level fine. Uh, 5820 uh, ish on the downside. So there's about a range of about 5810 to 5820 that we want to keep an eye on. We want to hold the bottom of this new uh, six day tight range that we've been in. Uh, 5872 to 78 on the upside uh, is resistant. So once again, go to a higher level, uh, consolidate. These consolidations should resolve in the direction of the primary trend, just like they did when we broke out on 10.9, which was here. Uh, and we just go to a higher level and we uh, watch the highs and the lows of that level. If we break above it, it's bullish. If we break below it, it's a mild cause for concern. How far we break below it, and if we stay below it, and what happens relative to the 8 and 21-day moving averages, that's what really defines uh, how, how aggressive we're going to stay in the market. I saw the CNBC uh, headline for the day, Dow pulls back 350 points. That really didn't signify um, what was happening with leading names. So uh, come to us if you want what's going on under the hood. Not that all things are uh, rosy, certainly. If there's only going to be uh, seven stocks holding up the market, well, we need to know that. If interest rates are breaking out, we need to know that because that'll impact stocks. So uh, that's why we do this inter-asset correlation section uh, every night. It's just that important. NASDAQ 100. Uh, still consolidated and didn't make a new high the way the S&P 500 did, uh, but biding its time. And like I said, if rates are going to go higher and money is looking for a place to go, the stellar balance sheets of those big names uh, will be the place where uh, it resides. We've seen this before. Uh, normal pullback. They, I mean, it, the, the Dow is at, almost at 43,000 now. So to say a 300 point pullback is or 350 point pullback. It's only eight tenths of a percent. I mean, it's pretty annoying, actually, the way the headlined uh, media portrays things. Anytime you see uh, anybody displaying something in points, percent is what matters. Points don't mean doesn't mean a damn thing. Uh, so that's the Dow. That's a pet peeve of mine. Uh, S and P five hundred mid caps still maintaining the breakout, but pulling back around this thirty two hundred level. Bit of a severe pullback, down one point two percent, but. You always need follow through, whether it's strength or weakness. Uh, this is looking like a failed breakout on the NASDAQ 100. Now we need to get right back above this 2260 level. We were above it two days. Very nice two day consolidation. Wake up to rates breaking out and you break below it. Down 1.6% is uh, not a good sign. We broke, we got into this on that break of the downtrend line. And uh, we've pulled back about half of that, a little less than half of that, which is completely normal. Uh, the 21 day is below that. That's where our stop will be for our uh, small cap long position. Let's go to the equal weight S&P. Uh, pulling back and a close below the eight day today. So that's uh, something to pay attention to uh, as well. Below it by a tenth of a percent, we want to get back above that level or worst case bounce at the 21 should we get down to there. But notice that the relative um, relative strength on equal weight has not been confirming uh, the new highs in price. So we got, um, here was the peak. We got a new high in price all through here. That didn't confirm. We got another new high here. That didn't confirm. We got a new high here. That didn't confirm. Uh, so equal weight um, underperforming the market cap weighted S&P 500. So those are the major indexes. Let's go to the VIX, which is where we start off our inter asset correlation. VIX, um, I don't know why it shows that. The VIX is actually up on the day by 1.9%. Uh, above the 50-day moving average, below the 21-day moving average. Ideally, we want to see this below 16. We're seeing the VIX high, even though the S&P is trading below uh, with an ATR of below 1%. We always keep an eye on what is the ATR of the S&P. 
that factors into volatility and factors into volatility of most names because they will move in the direction of the S&P. The S&P is more volatile. They're going to be more volatile. That's the whole point behind our Revere Volatility Adjusted Basis System uh, that we've developed. So there's the VIX. Let's go to the dollar. This is also uh, a bit of a problem. It continues to spike. Didn't stop silver from breaking out or gold from making a higher high. So the correlation isn't as strong, but the relative strength on those hasn't been uh, as strong until that big breakout in silver on Friday. But uh, those reversed after gapping overnight into today with interest rates breaking out. Uh, so there's a stronger dollar. That's typically a headwind for stocks, but again, uh, not the headwind it normally is. So you have to be aware of what the correlation is and also be ready for that correlation to flip on a mo moment's notice. Note, we're coming into a big resistance area here with the dollar going back to April. Uh, this 104 level, April, May, June, uh, we held above it into July. Then we finally broke it late July, early August. We're coming back into that level. So that's definitely something to keep an eye on. Bulls would want to see a pullback with this uh, at this level. And and that would uh, most likely uh, propel gold and silver higher. Speaking of which, we'll go right there. GLD uh, gap up ended up closing lower on the day, but the gap up was to all-time highs. It's certainly entitled for a pullback as it's been strong over the last week and a half. Silver, with the big, uh, big move up on Friday and followed the gap, uh, closed mid-range up 0.69%. I saw uh, overnight it was up 3% at one point. Definitely something we're keeping an eye on. When silver goes, it can really go quickly. Look at this move in silver. I remember playing this back after the financial crisis going from five up to 50 uh, throughout 2008, 2009, 2010. Uh, like I said, when it moves, it can move quickly. We want to get on board that. If it's going to, you can see how we broke above the resistance from 2020 and a few months back. So that's the daily on silver. How about GDX? Gold and silver stocks, gap up, reversed, closed barely positive, Showed some serious strength. You can see relative strength confirming the price new high. That's good stuff. Uh, Bitcoin, IBIT, broke above this 38 uh, level and is holding it for now. One, two, three, four, five days. Pulling back near the pivot, completely normal. You see the eight day coming up to it. Uh, made a higher high on Friday, just giving up a little bit of that back. And it did close near the highs of the day, down 1.3%. No big deal. Beautiful flat base setting up 152 days uh, now. So basically, uh, keep an eye on that. We discuss it every night because it deserves to be discussed. Anything, anything that we feel is of consequence, we discuss uh, in these videos. We created a video that I would want to listen to and uh, the guys I work with would want to listen to and hopefully... Uh, you would want to listen to, and we've heard that from quite a few people saying you guys cover everything. That's all I need uh, to listen to, and that's exactly what we're looking to do. So here's the broad bond index making lower lows since the FOMC uh, cut rates. I might have said they raised rates earlier. No, they cut rates. Rates have been going higher in the face of that uh, rate cut. Here's the long bond. Yikes, down 1.75%. Again, lower low, and this is the top right there with FOMC, uh, the top in bond prices, meaning yields bottomed, completely counterintuitive to what you might think should have been happening. It's typical of what the market does. So here's that cup and handle that I was talking about. 30 year broke out above there. And here is this 4.4 level that acted as formally as support going all the way back here. Uh, to last year, finally broke below it, came up into it and re pulled back, just like I, I talked about I would expect the dollar to do, normal pullback, but it broke through it now. And uh, breaking through a resistance level is of note. 10-year, uh, basically the same setup, up, uh, handle, breakout, uh, right at that 200-day moving average and right kind of at 
uh, this former resistance turned support level. So um, bulls do not want to see that going higher, especially if you're a, a bull of debt laden growth stocks. TNX, I'm, I'm going to show the five year uh, it's same same setup, not as big a breakout, but that same cup handle uh, breakout on rates. Uh, we're we're watching it. It impacts the market, whether you say, um, whether whether you think it wants to or not, it does. And we've learned that uh, the hard way over the years. Benefit from our mistakes. We learn from them and we try to pass that on to you. All right, let's go to the tail of the tape, which I have on another screen and I need to drag in here. One second, please. Please and thanks. All right, here we go. Tail of the tape. So uptrend, great. The news, the 10 years, the news, hitting rate sensitive sectors, banks especially. Uh, the keys coming into today, that breakout support. Um, we're changing this. We're, we're above it. Uh, we want to focus on a new higher level. Uh, the NASDAQ 100, however, we want to keep this 490 level uh, intact here. Per percent of stocks above the five day, five day is nothing to be concerned about. So we're taking that off the keys for tomorrow. Day count. So uh, since the 10 9 breakout, eight days up. We're five out of eight of them. Now we're looking at this higher con higher level consolidation, six days that we've been in there. Watch the, for the lows of that level. We're 10 days above the 8 EMA, 29 days above the 21 EMA. Our expectations remain positive as long as the S&P and the NASDAQ 100 stay above uh, their 21-day moving average. Sectors to the upside, uh, tech, uh, defensive as an aerospace and defense, and silver, the dollar and bond yields to the downside bond prices 10 out of 11 spider sectors that's not good uh itb builders hit really hard uh banks also hit hard xlre was the worst of the spider sectors and biotech as well as those typically are really debt laden only change to the portfolio add to vrt i had the wrong uh earnings date written down on that and i will be taking part of this position off into earnings uh tomorrow we have a big big gain on our first first buy Smaller gain on our second buy, and then today's buy uh, will be uh, blowing that out tomorrow. Just want to manage our risk going into that. Very bullish on the company, the sector, but you never know what the reaction is going to be to earnings. But I can guarantee you that volatility will pick up. And the last thing we want is to get shaken out of our position because it's too large on a normal reaction. Uh, that's something that every uh, trader slash investor has to deal with. But the bottom line on the day, long-term yield spike. Hit rate sensitive sectors, but the S and P five hundred, Nasdaq one hundred, and leaders uh, acting just fine. Need for tomorrow, this new SPX range, the support fifty eight ten to fifty eight twenty. We need to stay above that on pullbacks. We did today, uh, and we need to going forward. Uh, the Nasdaq one hundred breakout support. We're sticking with this four ninety level. Twenty one day moving average on the uh, Nasdaq one hundred is coming up to that level too. So that'll provide uh, some additional support. Uh, so that's a good thing. And the long-term rates. What are rates doing? We'll be keeping an eye on that tomorrow. Primarily the, the tenure uh, is what the market seems to focus on the most. Okay. So that is the tail of the tape. Let's get to the 21 over 21 list. This is a longer video, so I got to go through this quickly. Uh, 21 over 21, we're going to go in order of... Uh, best to worst performer today first the two that dropped out uh copper and oil had a big spike on uh this supposed china stimulus this is a decent looking flag uh but the relative strength just isn't there we're not gonna we didn't get in a position uh so we're not having to sit through the losses but if it breaks below the uh back above this declining tops trend line or downtrend line um we can consider uh, getting into it. Uh, FCX also has uh, earnings tomorrow, so that reaction uh, will be key. But we cut that and also cut XOM, again, just a relative strength thing. Uh, up, attempted breakout, failed breakout, downtrend line below the 21 day. So those are the two that came off. Uh, I'll go to the two that came on, and then I'll just blow past their charts when we get to them. But Bitcoin, uh, with the higher high, 
uh, certainly needs to be noted. Uh, relative strength confirming this recent higher high as well. Uh, and SMR, these uh, small modular nuclear reactor companies are acting extremely well. Uh, this putting in a nice high tight flag. It has now become liquid enough, still lower price, so it's going to be volatile, but it has now become liquid enough, over, which is over $100 million in daily dollar volume. You multiply the average uh, daily volume by the price. We want that to be over $100 million or uh, it's too small for us to trade. And getting in isn't really the problem. Getting out uh, is the problem. When everybody's headed for the door, we do not want to take uh, a big loss. That's also why we will limit our size on this. It's a combination of the volatility and the liquidity to determine our position size. But SMR uh, is the second one added. All right, let's go through. And coincidentally, that was the one that was up most uh, on the day. No, it wasn't. Uh, NVIDIA was up the most on the day. Actually, it was tied. SMR and NVIDIA both up 4.1%. Uh, no volume on the breakout from this flat base. Not a surprise, though. Uh, but extreme strength, great relative strength confirming the price. Uh, you know, they say leaders from previous uptrends don't always uh, lead the next one. But NVIDIA is uh, with a 62 PE and a 2025 estimate of 119%. You cannot say this stock is expensive. Uh, so uh, NVIDIA up 4.1%. SMR, there it is, 4.1%. Uh, Uber up 1.6% after a five-day pullback after uh, this gap out of its base on um, uh, coincided with the Tesla robo-taxi event that didn't scare Uber shareholders. Not at the time it didn't anyway, but they haven't followed up the buying over the last five days with that. Micro strategy, really interesting story digging into this, the way Michael Saylor is handling the balance sheet, the Bitcoin on the balance sheet and the way they're securitizing it. Uh, up 1.5%, uh, really great breakout from that chart, little pullback and reinforcing the breakout. Sprouts Farmers Market just continues to ride higher. Axon, same thing. What you typically see, these real strong ones, they just ride the 8 EMA. Uh, the more volatile ones, a little harder to handle. Uh, but uh, the ones that ride the 8 higher are just a beautiful thing to see. CEG, remember, as always, if we own it, it's got the green flag down here. Uh, Shark Ninja, I think got the 21 last week, two days back above it, though. Ava, continuing to try ride the 8 EMA higher, had a shakeout there last week. ALAB. Uh, maintaining its gap up on its new product above that 60 level. Uh, Cart tried to move out today, but after moving out and already having two days up, wasn't quite ready yet. Reversed, uh, went red, but back to positive by the end of the day. We do own that. Mm, Seagate has earnings tomorrow. Uh, gapped down and buyers showed up. Uh, bouncing off the 21, getting back above the 8. F5, very tight range over the last five days. Coherent, we got into this last week on that uh, downgrade, had positive day today. We want to see this get back above the 100 level. SE, fighting at that 100 level. Also, Guidewire, beautiful job riding the 8 EMA higher. VRT, two-day pullback to the 8 EMA and earnings uh, coming up. Oracle. Uh, flagging, kind of going sideways over the last two weeks, not showing any relative strength. Uh, Palantir um, in a in a bit of a consolidation after a strong move up, had a three-day pullback and bounced off of that 40 level. IBIT, we already discussed. IOT uh, can't get above that half Livermore level of 50 and stay above it as it was the worst performer in the 21 over 21 list today. And that will wrap. As always, I'd like to hear from you. The email is Donna Rivera asset.com. The phone's 855 Real Wealth. That's 855 732 5932. Next Wednesday, no, two Wednesdays. No, it is next Wednesday. A week from this Wednesday, I'll be on uh, the IBD, IBD podcast after the market closes uh, on Wednesday, October 30th. We'll have plenty of reminders for you uh, on that. And, um, 
If you're interested in becoming a client, email my partner, Dan Stewart. That's Dan Asset.com. And as you know, our flagship portfolio protection designed to grow assets during uptrends and protect them as the market starts to pull back. If it pulls back, the it pulls back, the more defensive we get. But uh, pullbacks are really kind of considered normal unless you break this big black line. That's the 200-day moving average. This is where all bear markets occur. That's where we pick up the defense. But for now, nothing to worry about there, although we do have our eye on that breakout in yields. And with that, I'll wrap it for Monday, October 21st. Uh, my next video will be Thursday. I'm going to a Monday-Thursday schedule. Ted and Connor uh, will each do two throughout the week. I'll do two. And then we've got the podcast. Uh, and there, too, includes the Sunday, uh, Sunday um, the weekend uh, walkthrough, which is vital to get ready. Uh, I got to listen to that to get ready for uh, the market. My The Friday video new, normally wraps up the prior week. The Sunday video that Ted and, and or Connor do to get you ready for what you need to know for uh, the upcoming week. We got it all here at Revere, uh, and we appreciate your support. And please like and subscribe the videos. Only about one out of 10 people watching end up hitting like and subscribe, but it really helps the algorithms uh, if you do that. So as soon as you bring up the video, you even mentioned this at the beginning of the video, click like and subscribe. We'd appreciate it. Thanks for listening and have a great day.